the next session was kind of, the next section of the day is called sophisticated taste does not diminish with age. So when you look at, uh, I, I, I was one of these people that kept going into the stores and looking at some of the design of, of this stuff and it was just ugly. And didn't, it, it was almost as if, f you know, function was taken into consideration, but nothing about aesthetics. And so um, I think that the two are essential that they go together. So this next, uh, this next session is really addressing that, that one thing, which is, you know, what does it take to design irresistible tech? And by irresistible, we mean really usable. You want to continue to use it. It's essential. And um, so I'm really excited. I'm going to introduce you to Lorraine Chapman, who's going to be leading this session. She is the Director of Healthcare User, User Experience at Macadamian. Thank you. We'll, we'll set the timer for you. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Is the mic on? No. Can we get the sound up in the back for the mics? There we go. Thanks, now guys. Now I know it's working. Okay, so uh, welcome to our Designing Irresistible uh, Tech chat. And with me today, I have um, Kim Herman, Herman from uh, RN Resound, or sorry, R Resound, G Sound. GN Resound. GN Resound, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, Sugi yeah. uh, from Will. Um, and uh, the premise of today's chat actually is, um, is really about design um, and designing for your target audience. And I've actually um, sat through the sessions this morning and heard a familiar refrain as we've gone through all of the different um, talks. And, and the recurring theme seems to be about designing for your target audience. And while design has improved uh, by leaps and bounds in the consumer space, um, it's sort of you know been a little bit slow in uh, sometimes in hardware or in traditional um, devices, if you will, um, that just haven't got got the attention. So I'm really excited to be here um, with Kim and Sugi today because they are actually leaders in the space. So they've gone from just designing. Uh, for function, which is traditionally what the focus has been, and now designing for not just aesthetics, but for context, for environment, and for the target population that, um, that are, who are using these uh, different devices. Um, and so they're gonna talk to us a little bit about what they've been doing recently um, to improve the overall design um, of these devices for their, for their target populations. Um, so Kim, why don't we start with you? Um, and I apologize for the paper, but um, you guys have all heard the "my dog ate my homework." Well, my dad broke my iPad, I don't have uh, so I, <laughs> I had it on my iPad. But um, um, this is my backup. You're now. doing low tech today. I'm doing low tech. Um, so uh, one note: uh, I heard that Resound Links made the number one spot on uh, Mashable's list of 14 innovations that improved the world in. 2014. Yes, we did. That's great. Very Congratulations. Proud. Thank you. Um, so your company obviously describes itself as smart hearing. Yes. Um, so what made Resound want to make this leap into smart hearing that brings together both form and function and aesthetic, aesthetics, if you will? Yep. So several years ago, we really looked at the market and we saw this convergence of hearing healthcare as well as consumer demand. And we, we understood that consumers we're really demanding more from their hearing aids um, than just you know, having something that was cosmetically appealing and being able to hear. I mean, that's the foundation of what that device needs to have. But they were really looking for a consumer device that was empowering, that was very discreet, and that would enable them to um, interact and engage in their world, whatever that is, very personalized to them in whatever way that they want. Um, so we looked at the core technology that we have in the hearing aids, and we decided to pursue a path, which is a 2.4 gigahertz platform. And why that matters is because that's what allows us to then incorporate Bluetooth technology into the hearing aids, and then take that further with connectivity and apps, which gives the consumer that control over their environment. They also want them to be really small. So I'm actually wearing one, I know you can't see it, but it's tiny. You know, this is a very small, very powerful device. There's a lot going on in this, a lot of processing going on, and it also has a battery in it. 
Um, and so, but that's what the consumer wanted. They want something that's discreet, that they can't see, that is, um, but yet is there whenever they need it and they can just forget about it. And you mentioned something, so it is very tiny. It's about the size of a dime. That's great, because I, I know in talking to um, some seniors, uh, they're embarrassed. Right? Yes. They, that's one thing that they, they want to avoid putting the, you know, going to a hearing aid because they're, you know, they feel like it draws attention um, yes. to them. Um, so you fixed that problem. And the other thing I heard you mention is you've expanded their context, right? You're l allowing them to connect to other applications or, or devices, yes. much like you know the, I, the you know, Apple did for yep. the iPod, the iPhone, etc. So can you tell tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah. Yep. So you know there there's a couple of misperceptions out there. You know, hearing loss has been perceived with a stigma for a long time. And we really wanted to take that on because it shouldn't be a stigma. It's a condition. It's something that happens over time. It's very gradual. And you want people to be able to do something about that in a way that doesn't stand out, that you know, allows them to participate as they would normally. Um, so that, you know, that was number one, giving them the, the small device. We also really came to understand that the demographic, and our, our target demographic is typically 50 years old and older because your hearing um, does diminish over time. But we have products that run the gamut. So we have a pediatric line all the way up through um, you know, the more mature adult. But there was a misperception that that older adult doesn't engage in social media and they don't have iPads and they don't do this and they don't do that. Well, that's not true. They do. It's a very fast growing area. And so what we did is we set out to really make the hearing aids then connect with those devices. So last year we launched the first made for iPhone hearing aid. And what that means is that if you have an Apple device, you can stream directly from the device. So you can stream audio directly into the hearing aid. That is huge. That's a breakthrough for, for anyone with hearing loss um, because talking on a phone is very difficult if you have a hearing loss and on a cell phone in particular. You can also stream movies, audiobooks, anything that, that's audio here. But even more importantly than that, um, we have a, an app, a smart app, that then allows them to personalize the settings for the hearing aid based on where they are. So if you have a, a favorite coffee shop or a restaurant that you go to frequently, you can use the geotagging through the phone and in our smart app to set settings for that particular place the next time you go back there, your hearing aids are automatically going to adjust. You can change volume, you can change programs, you can see how much battery you have left. Uh, if you lose your hearing aids, you can find them using the app. There's a hearing aid finder. So we really um, talked with the consumers to understand what were their challenges. What do, they, what do they want? And what are the kinds of things that they find very challenging even when they have a hearing aid that's a phenomenal you know, audiological device they, they get presented with situations that they still need to have some additional control. And so we, we designed an app so that we could give that to them. That's great. So you focused on eliminating the, the barriers that come sometimes with having hearing aids or just having hearing loss in general. Yes, because the last thing someone wants to do is fumble around with mm -hmm. something on their ear, right? And if they're changing uh, something on the, on the device, changing the volume, they could be checking their email for all you know, or right. you know, sending a text or whatever it is. It's very discreet. So almost invisible. Almost invisible. Yeah, I like that. Um, and actually, that leads me to um, to you, Sugi. Uh, and I just want to make sure I got this right. But um, my understanding is that uh, you were inspired by uh, you and your colleagues were inspired by a friend disliking their conventional wheelchair. And of course. you know, one of the aspects. A wheelchair is very obvious, but you sort of, your company prides itself on sort of, you know, minimizing the appearance of it um, and focusing on the, the, the person and allowing them to, to do what they need to do. So can you tell us, a, you know, a bit about how you came about uh, your new approach and, and how you've adopted it? Yeah, so, so as you mentioned, um, we, our journey starts from my friend. And he said, I gave up going to the store, even just two blocks away. 
the reason because he doesn't want to be seen in the wheelchair. You see? Uh, as well, and also, you know, functional limitation. So I, I searched, you know, traditional wheelchair, and I found in 1920, the wheelchair, it looks totally safe. You know, it hasn't changed more than, you know, 15th century. So, okay, then, you know, um, we started to, you know, reinvent you know, personal mobility. So we design, create next generation of personal mobility device. Um, a mission is to re-imagine of the road and the function of the personal mobility device through design and technology. Yeah. So maybe my next question is um, better answered by a mm -hmm. demo, but oh, yeah. maybe you could <laughs> demonstrate how different this uh -huh. is from a conventional um, sure. wheelchair. Yeah, actually, so three things. Okay. We have. So the first off is the front wheel, our invention, unique front wheel technology. This is really unique. So it's composed of 24 small rollers. So it makes it very tight tiny radius for inside this, like this. See? So each roller is lowering so that, you know, it grab right sideways. And also this is four wheel drive. It can, it can cover on the snow, pebble, grab, any chain it can go. This is the first, you know, features. The second feature is, you know, needed to say design. <laughs> it, it, it looks, you know, stylish, but it's not only the stylish, aesthetically pleasing, but also we design the posture of the riders. So imagine all over mobility, like, you know, bicycle, car, you know, motorcycle. It's all over, you know, design of the handlebar. It's always li like this, right? It's makes people appear more proactive so that I have designed you know, a handlebar like, like this, not like this. The third one is a software integration. So we integrate a software, software app. So it can change you know, to fit more individual use. There are a bunch of you know, conditioned people. So to fit more individual use, we um, an accelerator, distillator, speed control can be customized. And also, there is you know remote control system. Connect. Yeah. So you can you know remote control. So for example, you know family member and the caregiver with traditional you know which uh, they they have to push from back like this, right? But with this you know, remote control, they can you know, enjoy the conversation side by side, like this. So it, it's, it's coming from you know, all in the user's voice. So this is you know, our feature. So, so on the last point, mm -hmm. um, it was not only, I mean, the, the style and ergonomics yeah. have been designed obviously for, for the person who is using the wheelchair, mm -hmm. but you just, alluded to the caregiver or somebody who might be accompanying them rather than pushing it, um, they can help control yes. as they're walking side. Sure. Oh, interesting, okay. Because, you know, um, the personal mobility, such as in a wheelchair posture, you know, the core user definitely need, you know, you know some help, mm -hmm. support. Right. That means, you know, um, friends, you know, lovers, you know, family can also need to, you know, the benefit from the product. Right. So that, that, that's why, you know. Um, so there's a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. You've kind of sure. changed it from a, a caregiver to patient, and, and people in wheelchairs may not, you know, consider themselves patients. Yeah. Um, and so you've introduced this peer-to-peer -peer relationship. Um, so uh, did you do, do any testing out in the field? Um, well, how long sure. did it take you to, to evolve um, the wheelchair with your target users. Mm -hmm. um, you mean that? Sorry, sorry pardon. So, like testing with actual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, users. So we have, you know, we have talked more than you know three hundred actual, mm -hmm. you know, customers. And yeah, we have been doing a lot of testing, and we have already passed you know safety standard left now, and they really like you know um, the appearance. Appearance. Okay. Design first. Yes. Okay. 
So the, the style is, is I, number one value. Yeah, because of the, you know, the difference. Okay. Difference. And they, they also like you know, um, the front wheel technology. So it can expand their lifestyle both inside and outside it. So. Okay, great. Um, so uh, back to you, Kim. Um, we started to uh, hear and read a lot about hearables. Um, yes. <laughs> And uh, that is an evolving um, tread. Can you can you talk about you know what Resound is doing um, in that area as well? Um, so I don't know if everybody. Uh, I think CES actually just um, uh, as one of their advertisements talked about. There was an article about um, just even if you're not hearing impaired, but using ear right. hearables to enhance you know certain experiences. Um, but also to get health data, um, to, to receive and send health data. So, um, how, and I know ReSound is, is a front runner in this area, so if you could tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so I like to say that um, we were in wearables before wearables were cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because hearing aids have been a wearable forever. And with this new category, we'll call it, of hearables, um, you know, I feel like, first of all, we're known as, as a technology leader. We've always kind of been uh, the organization that pushes the limits on what people say can, can be done and then go out and prove that it, it really can be done. So when you think about um, the product and the way that it's been designed with the, the physical attributes of the hardware, the audiological processing of the software, so we'll call those technology, and then we have connectivity, um, so you can connect to different types of devices, um, whether it's a smartphone or it may be a remote control or other types of devices, a TV streamer, and then you have the apps. When you start to put that all together into a system, I mean, the possibilities are pretty limitless. And you've got something here that's in a sensitive part of, of the anatomy that you can then begin to track data and um, provide that data then back to the consumer. So, you know, who knows what it, it may be, right. but I think the, the possibilities are limitless. You know, today um, we do, the, the hearing device does uh, track how the patient interacts with the um, hearing instrument, how many hours they may utilize it, different programs they, they use, different um, uh, environments that they're in. So when they go in and they meet with their hearing healthcare professional and they're saying, you know, I'm having a little trouble here, but maybe they can't really explain it. Or, or maybe it was a couple of weeks ago and they've forgotten. The hearing healthcare professional can go in, look at the data, and they can pinpoint exactly what that situation was. So you take that and then the whole system that's around it, and you have, um, you know, we're you, if you were able then to capture some of this biological data for folks and transmit that to them through an app and they can interact then with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, that's just an exciting forefront for us and, and we're happy to be part of it. Absolutely. So you've already got the ecosystem established. Yes. It's, it's now figuring out, okay, what's next in that ecosystem. Right. So um, I think a lot of people are interested in, you know, the future of some of these um, devices. I, and I know it's hard to predict, you know, what <laughs> innovations lie ahead, but what, especially from the perspective of your uh, users, and that's not just you know those wearing the hearing aids, but as yeah. you alluded to, the healthcare, uh, sorry, the hearing professionals who are um, helping helping your end users. What what innovations lie ahead, in your opinion? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, you know when we when we design our technology, it is very much focused on our interaction with the consumer. So we spend a lot of time really understanding the consumer, understanding the type of hearing environments or listening environments they may be in. And hearing loss is a very personalized thing. You know, your hearing loss is different than my hearing loss and, and so on. So really um, tracking that, and we do that, you know, design is an iterative process. So you're constantly putting out um, innovation and getting feedback from that consumer and then you know going through the next iteration of that that's what what we're doing um, and in terms of you know where it may be going I, mean, I just alluded to some of the health data stuff I, I think it's uh, there are so many possibilities it's incredible the other you know neat thing about this platform and this device is 
you know, these devices talk to each other mm -hmm. as well. So that's a whole other area that can be explored. So they're constantly looking at the environment and they're analyzing how best do I get those sounds that are coming from the environment to the consumer um, so that the brain can process it and they can understand it in the most natural sounding way. That alone is, um, you know, another opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. They're talking to each other. You can do a lot of different things with that. I mean, today people love being able to, you know, if they have one of these devices and they've got their smartphone and they need some navigation directions, that's also an area that's very difficult for people, they can hear the navigation in their hearing aids while they're driving and they can still hear everything else that's going on around them. So it's really practical things and then there's the, you know, blue ocean kinds of things that are yet to be discovered or at least to be announced. Okay, great. Um, and Suki, same question yep. for you. Um, I guess two parts, because we've talked about a little bit about analytics and then what lies ahead. Are you collecting any form of uh, data analytics or doing any data analytics with regards to your wheelchair? Yeah, um, what we are trying to do now is to collecting data of the infrastructure, uh -huh. the sidewalk infrastructure. The reason because you know there are a bunch of obstacles, for example, like in the bumps, in the cracks, and okay. also you know some wheelchair and wheelchair users you know struggling to find out, you know finding you know, where is the less you know restroom, where is the elevator as well. So that if we put the sensor on the device, so they can collect the data where is you know slope, where is the bump, you know. Okay. And also you know we we can see the you know um the route, where is you know the less of where can you know. Th those kind of data now we are planning to correct. So you're going to feed that to That's the right. user so that they can, they're, while they're yeah. using it, they're actually getting, they're actually getting real time information yeah. on their device to say, here's yeah. where you want to go or here's how you may want to adjust exactly. um, your usage of exactly. it. Okay. Um, and then in terms of, you know, the future, what, what does, you, what are some future innovations that you see coming down the yeah, so I think, you know, um, medical device, not only the product, so medical device, like healthcare product will become more like consumer device. Um, because people <laughs> might think about, you know, the medical devices more, is that kind of boring. Or, you know, some people might think, you know, a little bit scary a bit far away from the you know, typical daily life, right? right? But you know, a lot of company trying to you know, incorporate like, uh, design mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, user experience, like a uh, fun aspect into the product. So, so that, you know, I, I think, you know, um, you know, medical device will, will become definitely more like close to the consumer device. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, you make a good point. Um, just if I if I can sort of summarize what you said, right. there's that emotional. You're looking for an emotional yeah. con connection, and and we see that um, in the M Health um, or actually just any kind of consumer device um, area. So that that emotional connection between the consumer, or the user, um, and and their device. And sort of as a parting question before we open it up to questions, how I'd, I'd like to get an idea from each of you. What has that you know emotional reaction been from your from your users? How what's the feedback that you're getting so far on, on the yeah. innovations that you've made? Um, great question, and one I love to answer. Um, you know, when last year, so in in February of last year, we launched. Um, the, the first iteration of, of this product, and we have since filled in the product line, and so we now cover, like I said, from pediatrics through 100% of hearing losses mm -hmm. that are out there. And for the first time ever, as a medical device manufacturer, we had consumers calling us, and this was before it was even launched. We had just done some, you know, some press um, pre-release, and we had people calling us and saying, oh my gosh, where can I get it? How can I get it? We had the audiological community calling us and saying, please come out and train me as quickly as possible. And I think, um, you know, the comment about making it fun is, is actually really important. Mm -hmm. You know, we've taken something that emotionally was 
um, kind of a downer, a little bit viewed as, you know, a stigma or debilitating, and really empowered people, and they do have fun with these. How neat is it to be able to go to a cocktail party or dinner and kind of show people how you can, you know, adjust your hearing aids with your app or engage or tell, tell them where they are. You can leave them over there and you can, you know, you know where they are. They're not going to be lost forever. So the emotional connection has been fabulous. Um, and, you know, just being able, like I said, to talk on the phone or FaceTime with your loved ones that are around the world, that is a huge emotional attraction. And I mean, I could go on and on with stories mm -hmm. and they would probably all bring tears to your eyes uh, because people don't realize what they're missing until they have it back. Great. What about you, Chris? There is a funny story. <laughs> There's a guy named Larry. Okay. Uh, he was actually a pouch user. And he's suspicious, you know, of a product. And I he said, no, you guys don't know anything. You guys don't know anything. But after he finally drove the wheel, he said, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there is a potential in this product. That this was because you know, he got a you know, totally different experience. So basically, you know, which in the Pache uses you know, is, 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 is asked ask by you know, the pedestrian. Like, you know, may I help you? They always ask, you know, may I help you? Right. But when he drove the wheel, he is hearing more like you know, more positive, positive thing, like you know, cool, or you know, or who made it, your hero, this this kind of thing. So this was you know totally first experience for for him, because he has been in a wheelchair for 17 years, but he said this 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 was first time, mm -hmm. like you know, um, people openly you know come talk to to, to him. So I think this is kind of showing the you know, um, potential of you know, design you know, effect in the people. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we do, absolutely. Hi, uh, my question to Satoshi. Yep. Two, two questions. One is, does this product has to pass certain government regulation before they can use for seniors? Second question, does this wheelchair um, cost dramatically more than traditional wheelchair? Yes, yeah, so uh, first one is, you know, um, this, ha this has already, you know, um, created the regulation of the United States, Japan, and Europe as well. So that, you know, it can, you know, drive, you, you can drive, you know, on the sidewalk. And second one is in terms of cost. This price, um, retail price is 9,500. So that, you know, the basically, you know, uh, typical power which uh, or the standard power which uh, is around average of 5,000 to 7,000. So that uh, cost is a little bit high price compared with, you know, existing ones. Yeah. Okay, we have another question right here. Yeah. Thank you. So um, probably something that has stigma, stigmas attached to it look really cool, very easy to go wrong with that. Um, and how did this, what was the, how did you get it to look cool? Uh, you know, what was the inspiration? Because obviously, you know, Segway, which was for able-bodied people is kind of has a stigma, even though it's not for, you know, the same purpose. And I would be interested in your inspiration. Yeah, so the inspiration in the world, the this, you know, when I design, you know, this product, there are two key points. First one is basically existing, you know, purchase, you know, have, you know, two components, chair and the base, chair and the base. The chair, the purpose of the chair is, you know, rest like this. So it, for the inside use, so that it's, it's a little bit, you know, the weird, you know, if the chair is, is moving around in the sidewalk. Sidewalk. So that this dance looks like chair. So that we choose the color of black. It chair is disappear. Chair means disappear. <laughs> that is the first thing. And on, and the second thing is the posture of the light, as I mentioned. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The posture really affects. Yeah. The posture is really effective. 
So this is all the time we have for this session. Uh, let's give a big round of applause to our hot designer. <laughs> <laughs>